Part 4 of Ancient Greek Philosopher Scientists. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by 7. Ancient Greek Philosopher Scientists. A collection of the surviving words reported in ancient sources and translated by various translators. Part 4. Fragments of Epidocles of Argigentum. Translated by William Ellery Leonard in the fragments of Epidiocles. 1. Hear now, Pausanias, son of wise Antaeus. 2. For narrow though thy members scattered ways of knowing lie, and many a vile surprise, blunt soul and keen desire, and having viewed their little share of life with briefest fates, like smoke they are lifted up and flit away, believing only what each chance is on, hither and thither driven, yet they boast, the larger vision of the whole and all. But thuswise never shall these things be seen, never be heard by men, nor seized by minds. And thou, since hither now withdrawn apart, shalt learn, no more than mortal ken may span. 3. Shelter these teachings in thy own mute breast. 4. But turn thy madness, gods, from tongue of mine, and drain through holy lips the wellspring clear. And many wood, O white-armed maiden muse, thee I approach, O drive and send to me meek piety's well-reined chariot of song, so far as lawful is men to hear, whose lives are but a day. Nor shall desire to pluck away the flowers of fame and wide report among mankind impale thee on to dare speech beyond holy bound and seat profane upon those topmost pinnacles of truth. But come, by every way of knowing see how each thing is revealed, nor, by having sight, trust sight no more than hearing will bear out. Trust echo in ear, but after tasting tongue, nor check the proof of all thy members ought. Note by all ways each thing is tis revealed. 5. Yea, but the base distrust the high and strong, yet know the pledges that our muse will urge, when once her words be sifted through thy soul. 6. And first the fourfold root of all things here, white gleaming Zeus, life bringing here dis, and Natis, whose tears bedew mortality. 7. The uncreated elements. 8. More will I tell thee too, there is no birth of all things mortal, nor end in ruin as death, but mingling only an interchange of mixed, there is, and birth is but its name with men. 9. But when in man, wild beast or bird or bush, these elements commingale and arrive, the realm of light, the thoughtless deem it birth, when they depart tis doom of death, and though nor this is the law, I too assent to use. 10. Avenging death. 11. Fools, for their thoughts are briefly brooded o'er, whose trust that what is not can e'er become, or at, that is can wholly die away. 12. For what is not, what is, can ne'er become, so that what is should e'er be all destroyed. No force can compass, and no ear hath heard, for there twill be forever where tis set. 13. The all hath neither void nor overflow. 14. But with the all there is no void. So whence could aught of more come nigh? 15. No wise man dreams such folly in his heart, that only wise we live what men call life. We have our being and take our good and ill, and ere as mortals we compacted be, and when as mortals we loosed apart, we are as nothing. 16. For even as love and hate were strong of yore, they shall have their hereafter, nor I think shall endless age be emptied of these twain. 17. I will report a twofold truth. Now grows the one from many into being. Now even from the one disparting come the many. Twofold the birth, twofold the death of things. For now the meeting of the many brings to birth and death. And now whatever grew from out their sundering flies apart and dies. And this long interchange shall never end. Whilst into one do all through love unite. Whilst two through hate of strife. And in so far is the one will want to grow from many and the many again spring from primeval scattering of the one. So far have they a birth and mortal date, and in so far as the long interchange ends not, so far forever established gods. Around the circle of the world they move. But come, but hear my words, for knowledge gains make strong thy soul. For as before I spake, naming the utter goal of these my words, I will report a twofold truth. Now grows the one from many into being. Now, even from the one disparting come the many, fire, water, earth, and awful heights of air, and shut from them apart the deadly strife in equipose, and love within their midst, in all her being in length and breadth the same. Behold her now with mind, and sit not there with eyes astonished, 
for tis she inborn abides established in the limbs of men through her they cherish thoughts of love through her perfect the works of concord calling her by name delight or aphrodite clear she speeds revolving in the elements but this no mortal man hath ever learned hear now the undelusive course of proof behold those elements own equal strength and equal origin each rules its task and unto each its primal mode and each prevailing conquers with revolving time and more than these there is no birth nor end for they were wasted ever and evermore they were no longer and the great all were then how to be plenished and from what far coast and how besides might they to ruin come since nothing lives that empty is of them no these are all and as they course along through one another now this now that is born and so forever down eternity eighteen love nineteen firm clasping lovingness twenty the world-wide warfare of the eternal two well in the pass of human beings limbs is shown whiles into one do they through love unite and mortal members take the bodily's form and life doth flower at the prime again dissevered by the hates perverse they wander far and wide and up and down the surf-swept beaches and drearer shores of life so too with thicket tree and gleaming fish housed in the crystal walls of waters wide and so with beasts that couch on mountain slopes and waterfowls that skim along the blue sea twenty one but come and to my words for say look well if their white witness anywhere forgot art that behooves the elemental forms behold the sun the warm the bright diffused behold the eternal stars forever steeped in liquid heat and glowing radiance see also the rain obscure and cold and dark and how the earth streams forth the green and firm and all through wrath are split to shapes diverse and each through love draws near and yearns for each for from these elements hath budded all that was or is or evermore shall be all trees and men and women beasts and birds and fishes nourished in deep waters ay the long-lived gods in honour excellent for these are all and as they course along through one another they take new faces all by varied mingling and enduring change twenty two for amber sun and earth and heaven and sea is friendly with its every part that springs far driven and scattered in the mortal world so too these things are most apt to mix and like and love by aphrodite's haste but hostile chiefly are those things in which most from one another differ both in birth and in their mixing and their moulded forms and want to mingle miserable and lone after the counsels of their father hate twenty three and even as artists men who know their craft through wits of cunning paint with streak and hue bright temple tablets and will seize in hand the oozy poisons pied and red and gold mixing harmonious now more now less from which they fashion forms innumerable peopling a fresh world with trees and men and women beasts and birds and fishes nourished in deep waters ay and long-lived gods in honours excellent just so and let no guile deceive thy breast even so the spring of mortal things lest wise of all the host born visible to man o guard this knowledge well for thou hast heard in this my song the goddess and her tale twenty four to join together diverse peaks of thought and not complete one road that has no turn twenty five what must be said may it be said twice o'er twenty six in turn they conquer as the cycles roll and wane the one to other still and wax the one to other in turn by olden fate for these are all as they course along through one another they become both men and multitudinous tribes of hairy beasts whilst in fair order through love united all whilst rent asunder by hate of strife till they when grown into the one and all once more once more go under and succumb and in so far as is the one still wont to grow from the many and the many again spring from my primeval scattering of the one so far have they a birth and mortal date and in so far as this long exchange ends not so far forever established gods around the circle of the world they move twenty seven their views are not the swift limbs of the sun nor there the strength of shaggy earth nor sea but in the strong recesses of harmony established firm abides the rounded sphere exultant in surrounding solitude twenty seven a nor faction nor fight unseemingly in its limbs twenty eight the sphere on every side the boundless same exultant in surrounding solitude twenty nine for from its back there swing no branching arms it hath no feet nor knees alert nor form or life-producing member a sphere it was 
and like unto itself. 30. Yet after mighty strife had waxen great within the members of the sphere, and rose to her own honors, as the times arrived, which unto each, in turn, to strife, to love, should come by amplest oath and old decree. 31. For one by one did quake the limbs of God. 32. The joint binds too. 33. But as when rennet of the fig tree juice curdles the white milk, and will bind it fast. 34. Cementing meal with water. 35. I will now make return to paths of festal song laid down before, draining each flowing thought from flowing thought, when down the vortex to the last abyss had founded hate and lovingness had reached the eddying center of the mass. Behold, around her into oneness gathered all, yet not a sudden, but only as willingly, each from its several regions joined with each, and from their mingling hence there poured abroad the multitudinous tribes of mortal things. Yet much unmixing among the mixed remained, as much as hate still held its scales aloft, for not all blameless did hate yield and stand, out yonder on the circle's outmost bounds, but partial-wise, yet within he stayed, part-wise was he already from the members gone, and ever the more sculled away and fled, then ever the more, and nearer, inward pressed, the gentle-minded, the divine desire of blameless lovingness. Thence grew apace these mortal things, erstwhile long wont to be, immortal, and the erstwhile pure and sheer, were mixed, exchanging highways of new life, and from thy mingling, thence are poured abroad, the multitudinous tribes of mortal things, knit in all forms, and wonderful to see. 36. And as they came together, hate began to take his stand far on the outer verge. 37. And earth through earth her figure magnifies, and air through air. 38. Come, I will name the like primeval four, whence rose to sight all things we now behold, earth, many billowed sea, and the moist air, and aether, the titan, who binds the globe about. 39. If earth's black deeps were endless, and all four were the white aether, as forsooth some tongues, have idly prated in the babbling mouths of those whose little of the all have seen. 40. Kin Dartin Helios and Selene Mild. 41. But the sun's fires, together gathered, move attendant around the mighty space of heaven. 42. And the sun's beams, the moon in passing under, covers all, and darkness a bleak tract of earth as large as the breath of her, the silver-eyed. 43. A sunbeam striking on the moon's broad disk. 44. Towards Olympus back he darts his beams with fearless face. 45. Round earth revolves a disk of alien light. 46. Even as revolves a chariot's nave which round the outmost. 47. For toward the sacred circle of her lord she gazes face to face. 48. But earth makes night for beams of sinking sun. 49. Of night the lonely with her sightless eyes. 50. Iris from the sea brings wind and mighty rain. 51. And fire sprang upward with a rendering speed. 52. And many a fire there burns beneath the ground. 53. For sometimes so upon its course is met, and oft times otherwise. 54. In earth sang ether with deep stretching roots. 55. Earth sweat the sea. 56. The salt grew solid, smit by beams of sun. 57. There budded many a head without a neck and arms were roaming shoulderless and bare, and eyes that wanted foreheads drifted by. 58. In isolation wandered every limb, hither and thither, sea and union meet. 59. But now as God with God was mingled more, these members fell together where they met, and many a birth besides was then begot, in the long line of ever-varied life. 60. Creatures of countless hands and trailing feet. 61. Many were born with twofold brow and breast, some with the face of man on bovine stock, some with man's form beneath a bovine head, mixed shapes of being with shadowed secret parts, sometimes like men and sometimes woman growths. 62. But come, now hear how t'was the sundered fire, led into life the gems, erst whelmed in night, of men and women, the pitied and bewailed, for tis a tale that sees and knows its mark, first rose mere lumps of earth with rude impress, that had their shares of water and of warm. These then by fire, in inward zeal to reach its kindled fire in heaven, were shot aloft, abated not yet had they revealed a form of lovely limbs, nor yet a human cry, nor secret member common to the male. 63. But separate is the birth of human limbs, for tis in part in man's. 
64. Love longing comes, reminding him who sees. 65. Into clean wombs the seeds are poured, and when therein they meet with God, the birth is girls, and boys when contrawise they meet with warm. 66. Into the cloven meads of Aphrodite. 67. For bellies with warmer wombs become mothers of boys, and therefore men are dark, more stalwart and more shaggy. 68. On the tenth day, in the month the eighth, the blood becomes white pus. 69. Twice bearing. 70. Sheepskin. 71. And if belief lack pith, and thou still doubt, how from the mingling of the elements, the earth and water, the ether and the sun, so many forms and hues of mortal things, could thus have been, as one have come to be, each framed and knit by Aphrodite's power. 72. As the tall trees and fish in briny floods. 73. As Cyprus, after watering earth with rain, zealous to heat her, then did give earth o'er, to speed of fire that then she might grow firm. 74. Leading the songless shoals of spawning fish. 75. Of beasts, inside compact with outside loose, which, in the palms of Aphrodite shaped, got this their sponginess. 76. Tis thus with conchs upon the heavy chines, of ocean dwellers, I, of shellfish wreathed, of stony hided turtles, where thou markst the earthen crust outside the softer parts. 77 through 78. Trees bore perennial fruit, perennial fronds, laden with fruit the whole revolving year, since fed forever by a fruitful air. 79. Thus first tall olives lay their yellow eggs. 80. Wherefore pomegranates slow in ripening be, and apples grow so plentiful in juice. 81. Wine is but water fermented in the wood, and issues from the rind. 82. From the same stuff on sturdy limbs grow hair, leaves, scales of fish, and birds thick feathered plumes. 83. Stiff hairs, keen piercing, bristle on the chines of hedgehogs. 84. As when a man, about to sally forth, prepares a light and kindles him a blaze of flaming fire against the wintry night, in horny lantern shielding from all winds, though it protect from breath of flowing winds, it beams darts outward, as more fine and thin, and with untiring rays lights up the sky, just so the fire primeval once lay hid in the round pupil of the eye, enclosed in films and gauzy veils, which through and through were pierced with poles divinely fashioned, and thus kept off the watery deeps around, whilst fire burst outward as more fine and thin. 85. The gentle flame of eye did chance to get only a little of the earthen part. 86. From which by Aphrodite the divine the untiring eyes were formed. 87. Thus Aphrodite wrought with bolts of love. 88. One vision of two eyes is born. 89. Knowing that all things have their emanations. 90. Thus sweet seized sweet, bitter on bitter flew. Sour sprung from sour, and upon hot rode hot. 91. Water to wine is more nearly allied, but will not mix with oil. 92. As when one mixes with copper tin. 93. With flax is mixed the silvery elder's seed. 94. And the black color of the river's deeps come all from shade, and one may see the same in hollow caves. 95. As in the palms of Kripa shaped, they first began to grow together. 96. Kind earth for her broad-breasted melting pots. Of the eight parts got two of lucid nesties, and of her pastures four. Thence came white bones, divinely joined by glue of harmony. 97. The Backbone. 98. And after earth within the perfect ports of Aphrodite anchored lay, she met almost in equal parts her pastiosis red, and rain and ether, the all splendorous, although the parts of the earth were sometimes less, sometimes a little more than theirs, from these there came our blood, and all the shapes of flesh. 99. A bell, a fleshy twig. 100. And thus does all breathe in and out. In all, over the body's surface, bloodless tubes of flesh are stretched, and at their outlets, rifts innumerable along the outmost rind are bored. And so the blood remains within, for air, however, is cut a passage free. And when from here the thin blood backward streams, the air comes rushing in with roaring swell. But when again it forward leaps, the air in turn breathes out, as when a little girl plays with a water clock of gleaming bronze, as long as ever the opening of the pipe is by her pretty fingers stopped and closed, and thus while plunged within the yielding mass of silvery water, can the wet no more get in the vessel, but the air's own weight 
that falls inside against the countless holes keeps it in check until the child at last uncovers and sets free the thickened air. When of a truth the water's destined bulk gets in, as air gives away, even so it is when in the belly of the brazen clock the water lies and the girl's fingertip shuts the pipe and tube. The air that from without comes pressing forward holds the water back about the passages of the gurgling neck. As the child keeps possession of the top until a hand will loosen, will amain, quite contrawise to way and wise before, pours out and under the water's destined bulk, as air drops down and in. Even so it is, with the thin blood that through our members drive, when hurrying back it streams to inward, then amain a flow of air comes rushing on. But when again it forward leaps, the air in turn breathes out along the self same way. 101. Sniffing with nostrils mites from wild beasts' limbs, left by their feet along the tender grass. 102. And thus got all things share of breath and smells. 103. Thus all things think their thought by will of chance. 104. And in so far the lightest at their fall do strike together. 105. In the bloodstreams, back leaping unto it, the heart is nourished, where prevails the power that men call thought. For lo, the blood that stirs about the heart is man's controlling thought. 106. For unto men their thrift of reason grows according to the body's thrift and state. 107. For as these commingled all things are, even through these men think, rejoice or grieve. 108. As far as mortals change by day, so far by night their thinking changes. 109. For tis through earth that earth we do behold, through ether divine ether luminous, through water water, through fire devouring fire, and love through love, and hate through doleful hate. 110. For if reliant on a spirit firm, with inclination and endeavor pure, thou wilt behold them, all these things shall be forever thine for service and besides, therefore full many another shalt thou gain. For of themselves into that core they grow, of each man's nature, where his essence lies. But if for others thou wilt look and reach, such empty treasures, myriad and vile, as men be after, which forevermore blunt souls and keen desire. O oh, then shall these most swiftly leave thee as the seasons roll, for all their yearning is a quick return, unto thy own primeval stock, for know, all things have fixed intent and share of thought. 111. And thou shalt master every drug that e'er was made defense against sickness and old age, for thee alone all this I will fulfill. And thou shalt calm the might of tireless winds that burst on earth and ruined seed lands. I shall thou arouse the blasts and watch them take thy vengeance, wild and shrill, for that before thou cowardest them, thou shalt change black rain to drought at seasons good for men, and the long drought of summer shalt thou change to torrents nourishing the mountain trees as down the stream from ether, and thou shalt from Hades beckon the might of perished men. One twelve, ye friends who in the mighty city dwell, along the yellow Arceus hard by the Acropolis, ye stewards of good works, the stranger's refuge, venerable and kind, all hail, old friends, but unto ye I walk, as God immortal now, no more as man on all sides honoured fittingly and well, crowned both with fillets and with flowering wreaths, when with my throngs of men and women I come to thriving cities, I am sought by prayers, and thousands follow me that they may ask the path to wheel and vantage, craving some from oracles, while others seek to hear a healing word gainst many a foul disease, that all too long hath pierced with grievous pains. 113. Yet why urge more, as some forsooth I wrought some big affair? Do I not far excel the mortals around me, doomed to many deaths? 114. O friends, I know indeed in these words which I speak that very truth abides, but greatly troubles unto men always hath been the emulous struggle of belief to reach their bosoms. 115. There is a word of fate, an old decree, and everlasting of the gods, made fast with amplest oaths, that whosoever of those four spirits, with their lot of age-long life, do foul their limbs with slaughter in offense, or swear foresworn as failing of their pledge, shall wander thrice ten thousand weary years far from the blessed, and be born through time in various shapes of mortal kind, which change ever and ever troublous paths of life. For now air hunts them onward to the sea, now the wild sea disgorges them on land. Now earth will spew them towards beams of radiant sun, whence he will toss them back to whirling air. Each gets from other what they all abhor, and in that brood I too am numbered now, a fugitive and vagabond from heaven. 
as one obedient unto raving strife. 116. Carry sabors intolerable fate. 117. For I was once already boy and girl, thicket and bird, and mute fish in the waves. 118. I wept and wailed, beholding the strange place. 119. From what large honor and what height of bliss am I here fallen to move with mortal kind? 120. And then we came unto a roofed cave. 121. A joyless land, where slaughter and grudge, and troops of doom besides, where shriveled diseases and obscene decays, and labors, burdened with the water jars, do wander down the dismal meads of bane. 122. There were earth mother, there the far-peering virgin of the sun, and bloody quarrel and grave-eyed harmony, and there was fair and foul and speed and late, black-haired confusion and sweet maiden shore. 123. Growth and decay, and sleep and roused from sleep, action and rest, and glory many crowned, and filth and silence and prevailing voice. 124. O mortal kind, O ye poor sons of grief, from such contentions and such sighing sprung. 125. For from the living he the dead did make, their forms exchanging. 126. All things doth nature change, enwrapping souls in unfamiliar tunics of the flesh. 127. The worthiest dwellings of the souls of men, when tis their lot to live in forms of brutes, are twenty lions, those great beasts that sleep, crouched on the black earth up the mountain side. But when in forms of beautiful plume trees they live, the bays are worthiest for souls. 128. Nor unto them was any heir as God, nor Kaidomius, nor Zeus, the king of gods, nor Cronos, nor Pisodium, then, but only Crispus' queen, whom they with holy gifts were wont to appease, with costly unguents of rich fragrancy, with gentle sacrifices of taintless myrrh, with redolent fumes of frankincense of old, pouring libations out upon the ground of yellow honey, not then with unmixed blood of many bulls was ever an altar stained, but among men to a sacrilege most vile, to reeve of life and eat the godly limbs. 129. Was one among them there, a supreme man, of vastest knowledge, gainer of large wealth, of understanding and chief master wise of diverse works of skill and wisdom all? For whensoever he sought with scope and reach of understanding, then twas his view, readily each and every thing that e'er in ten or twenty human ages throve. 130. All things were tame and gentle towards men, all beasts and birds, and friendship's flame blew fair. 131. For since, O Muse and Dian, that couldst deign to give for these our paltry human cares, a gateway to thy soul, O now much more, Calliope of the beautiful dear voice, be near me now, beseeching, whilst I speak, excelling thoughts about the blessed gods. 132. O well with them, who hath secured his wealth, of thoughts divine, O wretched he whose care is shadowy speculation of the gods. 133. We may not bring it near us with our eyes, we may not grasp it with our human hands. Where neither hands nor eyes, whose highways twain, whereby belief drops into minds of men. 134. For tis adorned with never a man-like head, for from its back there swing no branching arms, it hath no feet nor knees alert, no form of tufted secret member, but it lives, one holy mind, ineffable, alone, and with swift thoughts darts through the universe. 135. But the wide law of all extends throughout, broad ruling either, and the vast white sky. 136. Will ye not cease from this great din of slaughter? Will ye not see, and thinking as ye are, how ye rend one another unbeknown? 137. The father lifteth for the stroke of death his own dear son with changed form, and slits his throat for sacrifice with prayers, a blinded fool, but the poor victims press imploring their destroyers, yet not one, but still is deaf to piteous moan and wail. Each slits the throat, and in his halls prepares a horrible repast. Thus too the son seizes the father, children the mother sees, and reeve of life and death their own dear flesh. 138. Drawing the soul as water with a bronze. 139. Ah, woe is me, that never a pitiless day destroyed me long ago, ere yet my lips did meditate this feeding's monstrous crime. 140. Withhold your hands from leaves of Phoebus' tree. 141. Ye wretched, O ye altogether wretched, your hands from beans withhold. 142. Neither roofed halls of ages holding Zeus delight, nor dire Hecate's vengeance house. 143. Scooping from fountains five with lasting bronze. 144. O fast from evil doing. 145. 
since wielded by your evil doings huge, near shall ye free your life from heavy pains. 146. And seers at last, and singers of high hymns, physicians, sage, and chiefs, all earth-born men, shall they become, whence germinate the gods, their excellent in honors. 147. At hearth and feast companioned with the immortals, from human pains and wasting eld immune. 148. Man enfolding earth. 149. The cloud collecting. 150. The blood full liver. 151. Life giving. 152. Evening. The day's old age. 153. The belly. 153a. In seven times seven days. End of part four. Recording by seven.